Grace and peace, dear church from our Lord Jesus Christ, on this Sunday in Easter, today is Good Shepherd Sunday, or the so-called Good Shepherd Sunday, because all lessons have the image of sheep and shepherds, and the gospel in the three-year lectionary divides the so-called Good Shepherd speech from Jesus in chapter 10 in three parts. Today we hear the I am the gate, next year we're going to hear I am the good shepherd, and the third year we'll finish up that uh, passage, of course. So is there any better place to be on a good shepherd Sunday than at a good shepherd church? I don't think so. So you're here for a treat. Good shepherd Sunday not only have these beautiful images from sheep and shepherds, but gives us the most famous psalm in the book of Psalms, and arguably the most famous passage from Scripture, Psalm 23. Who doesn't love Psalm 23? So famous, so well known, everybody loves Psalm 23. A lot of us know it by heart. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He has beautiful verses that are also famous, like, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then towards the end, you have the, all the beautiful uh, verse, My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A famous passage, a famous piece of scripture that have helped the faithful from generations through different and difficult parts of time. Maybe you have held on to this psalm in your own life, going through your own experiences. What I can tell you is that it helped King David. King David in Old Testament, when he was living in hiding, he found comfort in these words, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. What I can tell you is that Ruth and Noemi coming back from a foreign land with empty hands, nothing to their name, they found comfort in these words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. There are so many people who find strength in these verses. And you know them too. We all know, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. So why do we want so much? Why do we stress so much? Why are we so anxious? Why can we not fall asleep at night? If we know that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want, why is it that it's so hard? To believe it. So this brought me to communication in theory, thinking it cannot be the word of God because the word of God comes from above and it's powerful and great. So the problem got to be in the communication that we're sharing, how we're sharing these words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And maybe those words are not sticky enough. Stickiness is one of those things that uh, communication theorists and people in marketing try to create, something that is sticky and that people will remember. Like, very few people outside of New Jersey know that New Jersey is the garden state. But if you're a lover, you know what state is for you, don't you? Virginia. Sticks. So different companies spend a lot of money trying to make their campaigns and their message stick. Like, for example, the Olympic Games. Olympic Games, Atlanta, what was it, 1984? Who was alive then? Thank you. Olympic Games, Coca-Cola company said, we want to be the official soft drink for the Olympic Games. How much is it? Oh, billions of dollars. Oh, we don't care, we're Coca-Cola. We cut you the check. 
but we won Coca-Cola everywhere, right next to the Olympic uh, rings. We won the Coca-Cola logo right there. We want to run global campaigns. We're going to get the most prestigious um, marketing firms to create the most amazing ads, television, radio, you name it. Okay, do it. They cut the check, they did it. Olympic Games were a success. And then someone decided to study this and do a little exercise and actually test how many people knew that Coca-Cola was the official drink of the Olympic Games. Fun fact, not everybody knew. A lot of the people who were part of this uh, test did not know that Coca-Cola was the official soft drink. And even worse, some people thought it was Pepsi. Can you imagine being in charge of that campaign, putting all that money, all that time, all those resources for someone to have the nerve to tell you, I thought it was Pepsi. Are you kidding me? I've been working at this for years. It didn't stick. Of course, you and I, church people, and those of you watching from home, we know this. We know this. Classic church issue. Next Sunday, we have our Sunday school um, ice cream social. We advertised it a month ago. We put it in the Life Equity Shepherd email every week. I'm talking about it today for next Sunday. We're sending emails to people, families with children. Don't forget, next Sunday, ice cream social after church. You know, and I know, that next Sunday, someone's going to come here and say, Pastor, when is the ice cream social? It's today. We send you 10 emails. We call you. We send, you know, pigeons to your house. But the message didn't stick. It didn't have that stickiness <clears throat> that it's so much needed to remember. So I'm trying today to make this message stick. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Why don't you help me make it stick? And get to the person right next to you at church and say to the person, say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Please say it. I shall not be in want. Let's get this to stick so we can find that peace in our hearts. So stickiness is one issue. The other issue, if, if we cannot remember, we cannot live at these words, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want is that sometimes there's just too much clutter and we cannot remember, we get mixed up. An adult in America gets over 3,000 messages a day. Imagine, in your own life, when you wake up, look at your phone, turn the TV on, turn the radio on in the car, all the messages that you're absorbing, or whatever thing. Social media, phone calls, messages, text messages, so in the midst of those over 3,000 messages, the good shepherd voice have to cut through so you can listen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And it's hard because there's so many messages that then we forget and get mixed up. I see it every time I teach confirmation class, or most of the times I teach confirmation class. As you know, I like to teach them what we know, there are the Ten Commandments. And as you know, I bring the Ten Commandments often to my preaching because I think it's something that we should know. Because if we are Christians and we believe in the Ten Commandments, at the very least, we should know them. So I do that with a confirmation class. But before I go deep with the Ten Commandments, I want to have like a base level and say, well, do you guys actually know them? Because maybe if you grew up here at Good Shepherd, I also teach them uh, I know that it, they're taught in, in First Communion class in Sunday school, so I want to know where the kids are. So I say, you know, do you know the First Commandment? Do you know the Second Commandment? Do you know the Third Commandment, the Fourth Commandment, and so on? And the kids say one or the other. And most often than not, most often than not, when I ask for the Second Commandment, one of the kids will raise their hand and say, Pastor, I know the Second Commandment. Okay, go. The right to bear arms. 
Uh, no. That's the second amendment. I'm asking for the second commandment. You get mixed up because there's so many messages. It's too clutter. So as a kid, what are you hearing more? The second amendment or the second commandment? How about you as an adult? If you watch the news every day, but come to church only once a week. Or maybe you come to church once a month, but you still watch the news every day. And I don't know what news channel you watch, and I don't know what you prefer, but when I watch the news in any channel, it seems that they want to make me angry. And it seems that they want me to be outraged at something. And people get to talk, especially when they get those little squares and have like six people yelling at each other. And you're watching and thinking, oh my God, I'm mad too. But the message of the Good Shepherd is not be mad. The message of the Good Shepherd is not yell at the screen. The message of the Good Shepherd is not hate everybody who doesn't think like you. The message of the Good Shepherd is different. What's the message? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. That's the message. So this morning, I want this message to stick. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. This Sunday, Good Shepherd Sunday, I want this message to cut through the clutter of our lives so you can hear it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. This Sunday, Good Shepherd Sunday, I want you to taste and see the peace of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. This Sunday, Good Shepherd Sunday, I want you to breathe in and out the peace that only the Good Shepherd can provide and comfort one another with the words of our faith. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. As I mentioned before, these words have provided comfort and hope and faith to a number of people. How many of us know these words by heart? How many of us have heard these words since childhood? And today we get to live them out. Today we get to remember them and say, yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in want. Tony Campolo, Pastor Tony Campolo, tells this story. He was in New York City watching the Men of La Mancha musical. Have you seen that one? The Men of La Mancha? Who have a witness? No? Thank you. I haven't seen it, but it's about Don Quixote the Spanish um, person, and during the, the show, he sees this couple that according to Pastor Campolo was a nice couple, you know, from the suburbs going to see the show, and he can hear the wife of the couple saying, shh, be quiet, be quiet, you're embarrassing me, stop it, stop it. And he looks in, and it's the guy who is sobbing. The guy is crying in the middle of the show, because the people on stage are singing the theme song of that musical. And the theme, song, the theme song is to dream the impossible dream. And the song was being sung, and this guy was just sobbing in the theater. Why was he crying? Why was he crying other than by the words themselves? Because the person on stage was singing about beating the unbeatable foe and striving with courage to go where the brave do not go. He was singing that the world would be better because of one man bruised and covered with scars, still strove with all the courage he had to reach the unreachable star. Pastor Campolo thinks that this guy was crying because he has lost his dream. He has lost his faith. If you feel like that man today, 
If you feel that there is just so much clutter in your life and so much stress and anxiety in your life that you have lost it and you cannot remember it, I want you to hear it today from me. I want you to hear it today from us. For those of you watching at home, I want you to hear it from all of us who remember the words of the Good Shepherd. How many of you know Psalm 23 by heart? Why don't we say it together by heart? And if you don't know it, listen to it and hear the Christian witness of Psalm 23. If you know parts of it, jump in when you can remember the words so we can all share this faith with one another and remember. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're no evil. Confident. Before me. Oh, this is my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good Shepherd Sunday. Today we remember, today we believe, today we support one another with these eternal words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Amen.